My name is Sophie Pearsons and I work at City Imaging Ultrasound for Women in Melbourne, Australia. This is the first of a series of tutorials in which I would like to share my knowledge on diagnosing deep infiltrating endometriosis by transvaginal ultrasound. The most commonly accepted hypothesis as to how endometriosis occurs is a transplantation hypothesis whereby it is believed that endometrial cells during menstruation will flow back through the fallopian tubes into the peritoneal cavity. These endometrial cells will implant on the peritoneal surface and in some cases will even infiltrate underneath the peritoneal surface. In that case we talk about deep infiltrating endometriosis that usually occurs on the uterosacral ligaments, in the rectovaginal septum, on the rectosigmoid colon or even on the bladder. The treatment of deep infiltrating endometriosis is difficult. If this is the normal pelvis, the uterus, both ovaries, these are the uterosacral ligaments. They sort of define an area which is known as the patch of Douglas. And this is the bowel. Endometriosis will ma mainly start occurring on those uterosacral ligaments and from there it can infiltrate into the bowel wall and it can also cause adhesions between the bowel and the uterus or the uterosacral ligaments, hereby obliterating this space which is known as the patch of Douglas, causing patch of Douglas obliteration. This is a situation where this has happened. You still recognize a little bit of uterus, you recognize the ovary, but the rest of the anatomy is completely distorted because this normal patch of Douglas and uterosacral ligaments cannot be recognized. There are significant adhesions whereby the bowel is completely stuck to the uterus. And at each level of those adhesions, it is possible that endometriosis will have infiltrated into the bowel wall therefore making removal of the endometriosis significantly more difficult. The usual scenario when this is found at laparoscopy is that the surgeon doesn't dare to proceed without a colorectal surgeon present and without giving the patient bowel preparation. It is therefore significantly beneficial for preoperative planning to know preoperatively in advance that this is the situation that will be found. So that is why we should try with transvaginal ultrasound to identify bowel endometriosis. The actual complete assessment to look at deep infiltrating endometriosis includes looking at the uterus and the mobility of the uterus as we usually do during gynecological ultrasound. We look at the ovaries and the mobility of the ovaries. But in, in addition to this, we also need to look at the bladder, the patch of Douglas, the vagina and the rectovaginal septum and the bowel and I've highlighted this in bold today because this is what this lecture is going to be about identifying lesions on the bowel probably we start with the bowel because those lesions are the easiest to identify to look at the bowel we need to look in an area where we usually don't look and what we need to do is put the vaginal ultrasound probe in the posterior fornix because we are used to putting the probe in the anterior fornix and looking at the uterus and both ovaries. However, the majority of deep infiltrating endometriosis will happen in this area where the patch of Douglas is, the sacroutral ligaments and the bowel. And there is a whole variety of lesions that can be found in that area and the next slide just summarizes those slightly. The things that we can see and which we will extend more on in the next tutorials is lesions, just isolated nodules on the sacroutral ligaments. Then it can be that the bowel is stuck to the sacroutral ligament nodule. We can see sometimes that the bowel is stuck to the sacroutral ligament nodule, but that there is infiltration into the bowel wall, causing a bowel nodule. We will focus on that in this lecture. We can sometimes see that the vaginal wall is significantly thickened, causing a vaginal nodule. 
and that can then occur in association with a sacro-uterine ligament nodule or a bowel nodule or even the ovary can get stuck to it as well with um, immobility of the ovary as a consequence. Just reminding you of the normal anatomy of the bowel. On laparoscopy it looks like this as we noticed before, uterus, sacro-uterine ligaments and then the bowel which comes from behind the vagina and then pops into the peritoneal cavity just here. From there it will move towards the left and then upwards and with a normal vaginal ultrasound we should be able to see, if we're lucky, the area between the anus and approximately 25 centimeters above the anus. So we can follow the bowel for quite a long distance. The normal bowel wall has three layers. It has a very hypoechoic muscle layer which is called the muscularis and if you look very carefully you can even see that that is divided by this white line in an external and an internal layer. The second layer is the submucosa which is very hyperechoic and the third layer is the mucosa and then we've got a little bit of fluid here in the bowel and at the back wall it's again the same thing mucosa, hyperechoic submucosa and hypoechoic muscularis layer. Endometriosis will grow from the outside in. Remember that the endometrial cells will fall onto the bowel in the peritoneal cavity and they will start forming a nodule first in the muscle layer of the bowel and as they do so the muscle layer gets thickened and you get this hypoechoic nodule and the submucosa layer which is hyperechoic gets pushed forward by this nodule and it is because bowel nodules are so hyperechoic that if we actually look that they are very easy to see. The easiest way to look at the bowel is in a longitudinal section. So I pull my vaginal ultrasound probe almost to the introitus of the vagina and I angle backwards so I identify the bowel. The easiest thing to recognize is the muscle layer because it is hypoechoic but you can see the three layers muscle layer, submucosa, mucosa, submucosa on the other side and muscle layer on the back wall. I push the probe deeper and deeper into the vagina keeping my eye continuously on the bowel. It is like a tubular structure and so the probe is adjusted so that the tubular structure is continuously kept in view. And the bowel will, ma will make lots of curves but I continue to follow this black line with, because this is where I expect to find the nodule and it will become more obvious once you see the next clip which will demonstrate an abnormal bowel but you can see that the bowel can be followed for quite a distance so here this is still the muscle layer that I keep my eye on just here and while I'm following this tubular structure I move my probe slightly to the left and to the right so that I continuously um, check the whole front wall of the bowel and when you look at the next slide it will become much more obvious what I mean with an abnormality. So you keep your eye on the black wall on the black line and there immediately it is very very obvious the bowel is stuck to the posterior vagina but there is a very eye-catching hypoechoic nodule visible on the bowel. This is a bowel nodule caused by endometriosis and this is a submucosa that is pushed forward by this bowel nodule. Now sometimes bowel lesions will occur in a free-lying loop of bowel. The previous bowel lesion was where the bowel was stuck to the sacro-uterine ligament or to the vagina. Usually that happens because there is some endometriosis on the vagina or on the sacro-uterine ligament and from there the bowel gets stuck to it and the bowel um, gets infiltrated by endometriosis. Occasionally endometriosis will just fall on a free-lying loop of bowel and from there starting 
infiltration in the bowel wall. And what I usually see then is first this is invisible on ultrasound, it's such a small lesion, but it starts getting bigger and bigger and as it grows bigger it sort of makes the bowel almost curl back on itself. So the length of bowel that's actually affected by the bowel lesion is much longer than what you would expect by measuring the width of this lesion. And this is an example of a lesion like this. So this is um, the back wall of the bowel is always quite thin because endometriosis usually affects the front wall of the bowel. And this is quite a big nodule. But again, you see the submucosa being pushed in front of this nodule. And this is then a clip demonstrating one of these lesions. Again, we start at the anus and we look carefully. We follow the black line, keeping our eye out for a big hypoechoic nodule. So again, the bowel comes into view more clearly here. Sometimes it is a little bit obscured by bowel content. But keep following it, keep following it. And here we see it immediately. It is very obvious because it is so hypoechoic. It is higher up than the usual lesions that we see that are stuck in the pelvis. This is a lesion that does exactly what I try to explain to you on that drawing. The bowel curls back on itself. But again, the submucosa covering it seems intact. Now, these lesions cannot be missed as soon as you start looking for them. The problem is that we are not used to looking at them. And if we can just change our mindset and add this to the examination, it will become a very quick routine with lesions that stand out and that can be detected with a very high sensitivity and specificity on ultrasound, allowing much better pre-operative preparation for this particular patient.